Welcome to the Jill on Money Coronavirus Market Update. It is Thursday, August 6th, and uh, we are going to get some weekly jobless numbers out later this morning. We'll report on that tomorrow. But really, we also have to keep in mind that the, the next big data point will come out tomorrow morning, Friday, which is the monthly jobs report. Those numbers are all over the place. The expectations are kind of crazy. Some are saying there will be a loss of a half a million jobs. Some say, no, there's going to be 2 million jobs. Overall, looks like 1.4 million is the consensus estimate. And the unemployment rate's going to stay high, you know, between 10 and 11%, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little less, just didn't matter. Okay. Let's get to your questions. If you've got a financial question, send us an email, askjill at jillonmoney.com. That's what Brian did. And he writes, I was just listening to you on KCBS radio and enjoyed your Q&A session. That's KCBS in the Bay Area. So thanks for listening, Brian. I have a question similar to one you answered. I filed my federal return in early March and I still haven't received my refund. I filed electronically and I know people who filed after me have received theirs in just a few weeks. When I check irs.gov, it says still processing. Is there any hope of obtaining my refund? Do you think they're going to pay me the 5% interest? They say they're going to pay 5% interest, Brian. So I'm hopeful for you. There's nothing you can do. And I, I'm so sorry. It's very rare that we have heard electronic filings delayed that long, but you're unlucky. What can I say? Okay. Jim writes, I want to tell you how much I enjoy listening to you on CBS News. That's great. My question is, my wife thinks we need to have $100,000 in the bank, cash on hand. We have $300,000 invested and mostly safe 401k and in five-year bonds. With no bills, how much cash do we need to have on hand? Look, the number is usually, what I say is six to 12 months if, if you're still working. If you're not working, if you're retired, then it's more like one to two years. Beyond that, it's just a question of making her happy. And I'm not sure you want to make her so unhappy, but a hundred sounds more than you might need. So figure out your expenses, six to 12 months of living expenses in the bank. If she's nervous, keep closer to the 12 months. Okay. Joanne writes, my husband and I are 65 and 66. With all the financial uncertainty, is there a way to protect the current money that's invested in our 401k without being taxed or penalized? We work so long and hard. We don't want to lose our security after all this time. Well, what you can do is you can change your allocation and there is no tax penalty for doing anything around that, but you would make it less risky. Think about it this way. If you have 100% of your money in stocks, then you really ought to reduce that down to something that's more reasonable. You'll have to take a risk assessment. You'll have to look at what your goals and objectives are. But the long-term game plan should be that you have an amount of risk in there that can let you sleep at night, but also allows the money to grow. So follow up with us. Tell us a little bit more about the details, and hopefully we can give you more specific, specific to you at least, advice. Ben writes, I love the podcast, especially with how, how you're able to comfortably answer questions in a concise, caring manner. I think you and Mark are truly helping a lot of folks remain level-headed through a difficult time. Thanks, Ben. Okay. Ben writes, I'm 36 years old. I max out my Roth 401k and I get a 5% match and 5% profit sharing. I understand the lean towards passive index funds. There are some solid funds available within my plan, expense ratios of just you know, very little. A few of the actively managed large cap and small cap mid cap funds have outperformed the passive funds by one to 2% in a one, three, five, and 10 year time horizon, but they have expense ratios of a half to 1%, which is obviously much more expensive. Should I consider selecting a portfolio of my assets in both active and passive funds based on higher performance, but also higher fees? Also, I keep hearing international funds need to represent some percentage of a portfolio. They seem to be historically underperforming. Do you recommend having international funds as a portion of a well-balanced portfolio? Yes, I do. So I would maybe make your stock position have maybe a 5 10% in international. I know there's been underperformance. Underperformance is for a period of time and it may change in the future. Look, I'm sticking with my low-cost index funds. I'm not making a big change. The only time I make a change and go into a managed fund is when there's an index that just doesn't really capture what's happening. And some of that can be like esoteric markets, like emerging market bonds. It's hard to buy the index fund. But if you're buying a U.S. stock index fund, stick to the passive, okay? This is from uh, 
Mr. K, who says, I saw you the other morning on CBS. I'm married. We've had no reason to have a lawyer, notary public, or any of the people you mentioned that was important in the process of creating a will, and we couldn't afford one. Why do I need a will when my wife is the beneficiary of everything important to me and is likely to decide where my current assets would go if I were to die? Because it's harder to manage an estate without a will. And you're right. Your state will actually inform the beneficiary, your wife in this case, that she's responsible for everything. But you've got other stuff that, you know, you want to know where it's going. And if you can't afford a lawyer, then hop online and create a will. It's not the worst thing in the world. So at least at the very least do that. And maybe you can just go into your local library or talk to your bank and have a notary, have a, a witness and a notary for that will. But it's not that hard to do. And I really do think it's better. And it's better for the survivor to have a will in place. Your estate will be probated. That's a pain in the neck. With a will, it's a little bit easier. I hope that helps. Well, thank you so much for listening. As always, we love to get your emails. It's very easy to contact us. Our address, ask Jill at jillonmoney.com or when you're on the website, jillonmoney.com. There you can listen to past shows if you've missed them. And you can also read all the stuff that we write and you can watch TV appearances and check out our resource section. Don't forget to sign up for our free weekly newsletter. It is free and it comes out every Friday, which is weekly as far as I'm concerned. Subscribe to this podcast, wherever you get your favorite podcast, pass it along. We sure would appreciate a rating or a review. And of course, we wish you all good health. To do that, you're going to have to wash your hands, wear your masks, maintain your physical distancing, and please, please, please try to do something nice for somebody else today. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.